probably is about two people, the guy on wheelchair and his new domestic worker, who is actually a first time um, domestic worker in Hong Kong. Their story from strangers to best friends. <laughs> and um, But the message behind is really anyone other than people who are in these two situations, they are they have the rights to pursue something really beautiful in life, like dreams, friendship, love, and family, and more. So, still dream, still human, still dreaming. I had just received um, that posting. People were sharing it, and um, and I was not really minding it. And a friend of mine said, "I think this has your name on it." And I said, "You know, let me just go there and see what it's all about." But after I met um, Siu Kun. I was like, uh, it, it changed my perspective for the project. I said, here is, a, here is a director who wants to treat the story with respect and dignity. And I said, and I want to be part of that. I want to support what she's doing in whatever capacity, even, even not as an actress. It started when I saw two random people on the street. <laughs> that was exactly like what we have in the film, Cherry and Evelyn a guy on wheelchair and, and a Filipino girl. So I was really, um, really interested by their interaction and I was curious about how, how close they are and what their relationship was. So that inspired me to write this story and luckily we got, this group got the sponsor, the, the funding from the government so that's how it all happened. I think, I think my research started two decades ago. <laughs> Um, uh, prior to prior to even thinking that I could land into a film, um, I was very interested in development work. In the Philippines, my, my bachelor's and my master's is in political science, and and my and um, and as early as um, you know, the, as early as. 15, 20 years ago, the, the issues of migration was already becoming a salient topic because it's, it, it, um, it tugs at the idea of our core and our identity and, um, and the effects that, um, that this migration has on our country, on our people, on, on the, fa the very fabric, socio-economic and political, because you're talking about the unit of the family, you know, and um, it's sad to say that what keeps the economy of the Philippines af afloat are remittances from from people. Yeah. You know, we export people, and that's a that's a sad reality to to confront. Um, so, uh, as early as um, my my university and master's days, um, I was really really uh, interested in, in migration, and and um, and this this phenomenon. By the time I got to Hong Kong, I said, oh, this is a perfect chance for me to connect with these groups, these, these diasporic groups, so to speak. And uh, I, had the, um, I had the great opportunity to, to, to work uh, as, um, in, in community work, um, uh, working with institutions that wanted to empower migrant workers serving in, in domestic services, you know, giving them a chance to, um, to get closer to their goals. You know, and that's what I realized, it's not so much as um, people reaching out and uh, and saying, "Oh, you need our help." No, it's not that. These people, a lot of the people that they serve are already very empowered. They just need the resources and the tools to to um, um, to realize the goals that they have for themselves. So, um, institutions that work, for example, with financial literacy and uh, and empowerment um, services. These are these were very important and. And one of the projects I, I did with these groups was to do um, a workshop in drama for for the for the for women who served in domestic work. And uh, in the process, we were drama is all about telling stories. And I realized it, it wasn't about putting on a show; it was about expressing and articulating what they had inside. So giving them tools to understand how they were feeling and. Um, the permission to be honest with, with what they felt. And the stories that came out were no different from yours and mine. At the core, you know, people tend, people tend to box things as, oh, they moved here because they have financial difficulties. No, that's just the jumping point, either the starting point or that's the, um, that's the ignition 
right? But really what, what fans the fire, you know, the fuel in that is, is a lot of struggle for, and a lot of dreams. So, you know, it's, it's, it's joys and pains and they had the same issues. Um, they talked about um, their families, their husbands and wives, their, their children, um, how they want to get from point A to point B or how they felt trapped. A lot of women stay in Hong Kong. A lot of women go to Hong Kong, for example, or abroad, initially propelled by the idea of, of money, you know, of, 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 of helping keep their finances afloat. But what keeps them there is a totally different story, right? Some people can't go back because they had not learned how to, um, how to make the most of their experience. Some people trusted the wrong people with their hard-earned money, and it's gone. Some people also just don't have a, some of the women don't have a sense of home. And so they're, 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 they stay there, like Loma in the, in the movie. So yeah, what, uh, these, um, these stories just had a way of, of seeping, into, um, seeping into anybody who was listening to them. And so I think I've been carrying this stor these stories for a decade. <laughs> and when the opportunity came that this was a chance to share these stories, I'm like, okay, here they are. Um, it's never that clear. It's never that clear. And I was also the person in charge for the whole project. So I, we got the money from the government. So I'm the person who would need to pay extra if we, you know, <laughs> over budget. So I was never that, you know, I had to stay rational all the time. Even when I was writing the script, like I really, really wanted to write about Evelyn's past in the Philippines. But obviously we, we wouldn't have the money to go to the Philippines, not to mention hire a few more Philippines to add as her family. So sometimes you have to compromise. So um, when I was writing, I my 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 producer's side will say, no, this is too expensive. And my director's side will go, oh, this is hard to achieve even in Hong Kong. We wouldn't be able to find something like this. So it's, it's, I know how we always say, oh, we're, when we're writing a script, we shouldn't care about the money. We shouldn't care about all those limitations. Just write what you think is right. But since I know this project will come true eventually, for sure. I couldn't really go just all, all, all the way, right? So I had to stay really rational. So that's how it worked. And, I, and I, when I write, I always think in an editor's mind as well. I think about how I would jump from this scene to that scene. So it's always a mixture of different moves. Yeah. <laughs>